automation, Yazda's Groves, the volume of work you do at that level of precision. Right. We went through all the problems, all the learning curves. It's pretty amazing, the equipment they're buying, the automation, the way they do first article inspections and an interface with customers and source work. I think this is the first time we ever had a baby on a shop tour. This is a big <laughs> we got, moment. We got two of them. Two babies, wow. Good morning, folks. We are here in Nampa, Idaho, just outside of Boise with Dennis Rathy with Creations Unlimited. So I've gotten to know Dennis for the past few years over the internet and WhatsApp, um, but I have never met him. No one's actually met him. Um, <laughs> how do you describe what you do in Creations Unlimited? I mean, basically we go after and try to solve our customers' biggest challenges. You've really figured out a lot of things. Automation, Yazda's Groves, the volume of work you do right. at that level of precision. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just trial and error, right? I mean, I started in the shop as the owner's kid and it was like my goal as a child not to be the owner's kid, the typical owner's son, right? right. We were completely normal three axis shop. We only did kind of overflow work for other big machine shops in the Bay Interesting. Area. Interesting, okay. And it was one of those things where 2008, the economy kind of crashed. We didn't have much to do. We were still running DOS programming back then. Really? No 3D files, no nothing. So I kind of oh, graduated high school. I was going to college in San Jose State. I was working at the shop full time. I kind of saw an opportunity. We'll do this 100%, give it everything we have and just kind of see where it takes us. We went through all the problems, all the learning curves, uh, shop environment, coolant temperature, yeah, yeah. thermal growth in the casting. That was a C-frame machine versus a bridge. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we learned every problem. I, I know that. Right. I know that well. It's pretty amazing. The equipment they're buying, the automation, the way they do first article inspections and an interface with customers and source work. Um, but then seven months ago said no more California. Right. And yeah, literally I mean, everybody here was just kind of like, we need to change. And we moved what? 23 machines, 16 employees, 800 miles and open this new shop here. And I mean, it took a year, right? There's planning ahead yeah, of time. Sure, and, sure. and logistically it was kind of a nightmare with trucking during COVID and right. yeah, and forklifts on both ends. I'm in, I'm in Nevada while they're dr dropping stuff off here. And <laughs> let's go see it. Yeah, let's go. So here's the shop. I don't know if you want to start an inspection or you want to start walking. And let's walk the yeah. machines. Yeah. So this 350, I was able to buy this from Grove. Uh, it was kind of secondhand, but it came with a warranty. Okay. So this was our first real five axis machine. Yep. German built. It says they're, this is what they call their Gen Zero machine. Oh, okay. So this is like 2015. Yep. Somebody was using it, they took it back. Oh. So they gave it to me at, at a really attractive price. They gave me a, a one year warranty. And it kind of just, that's how everything kind of took off. Yeah. And at the time, nobody knew who Grove was. Yeah. We're the ones responsible for making the parts. So in the beginning, when we had our, our first five axis machine, I was talking about the Quasar. Yeah. My brother and I would literally take turns. You just shut the door without a... So basically in the daytime, they come in and they run the second ops to go do inspection. So we do oh. a lot of first ops at night, right? They come in, they do the second op, they go check on the CMM. Interesting. Everything is good. Then they run it through production again. But it closed that door without reloading a pallet? That's yeah, so all behavior. through the cell controller. So we might only have one or two pallets to do the second op. Got it, okay, yeah. just waiting. When so, do your morning shift start? Uh, about six in the morning. Okay. We're, I mean, we're really flexible with the guys. We want you to work X amount of hours a week. Okay. You want to start at five, you start at five. You want to start at eight, like total flexible. Got it. Just more about reliable, right? If you're going to be here at eight, you're, you want to be here at eight, be here at eight. Got it. So, How many uh, folks are in the shop right now working? Uh, 20. 20, wow, okay. So over the years, this kind of fluctuates up and down as we get different work. And yeah. our, our goal here is to build more, I want to have eight guys programming parts and cutting parts instead of two programmers, three programmers, and a bunch of operators, right? I want to have the whole shop able, able to make, to make yeah, parts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do so much running at night while people are, where I know it's here. Yeah. So the daytime, they're checking coolant, oils, checking it. They're doing inspection work, setting up the next job, loading tools, checking tools. So, I mean, we have the most idle time probably when people are here, right? There's what, six machines that are automated. At least four or five of them run Monday through Saturday. No and kidding. if we're really, we're really behind or busy, right, we'll send somebody in on Saturday, load for Sunday. So, so, so what makes this different as a 350 Gen Zero? The table on the A-axis is like is a gear driven versus a direct drive okay. motor. The ball screw on the Y is only single ball screw. The newer ones have a dual ball screw. Well, but they they have that value line that's a single ball screw yeah, too, right? Yeah, the axis machine, from what I've been told by Grove, is basically this machine just re new sheet metal, yeah, updated fine. controller, good to go. And okay. we have nothing bad to say about this older design. Right? Yeah, yeah. The table's a little slower, so if you're doing blitz fork or something. You might want the direct drive motor, but yeah. as far as just cutting prismatic parts, this thing is great. So we can go on on this side. So here's kind of the, the the loader. And then during during shipping, right? Sh truckers, 
they, they strap over and, oh, and no. every piece of sheet metal. So we did so much metal work when we got here to re-straighten things. And sometimes the doors are still locked up, but you kind of show the automation here. Yeah. The Ro uh, Incredible. robot multi. Do you use your five axis machines kind of like fake horizontals a lot with like tombstones or Christmas trees, or are you a lot of one part full side of full access? It just depends on the workflow, right? We only have one horizontal. So most yeah. shops, most shops, they went from verticals, horizontals, yeah. they put a few in or maybe a, a line with pallet changers. We went from vertical five axis and yeah. they went backwards, bought a horizontal for a that's production funny. job. That's funny. Yeah. And it's like, you learn all the limitations on the horizontal when you're doing prototype work. For production, it's great. Yeah, right, right. But like the, when you've got the fifth axis vices lined up three in a row there, that so we'll, is... we'll do three. We'll do three parts at a time, and you be able to hit at angles, right? Yeah. So you're not just totally limited to three sides. Okay. So yeah. we have a lot of parts. You might only need. You might need five sides, but they're at odd angles. So you can get to them, or you yeah. might leave one in the middle. And kind of our thing is just having to all these pre-built fixtures ready to go. You're not trying to every job trying to design a new riser or a new fixture stack up or. So this is gonna. If I came back in six months, this uh, Aroa would have different parts in it, but it's probably the same pallet yeah, devices. I mean, it's really flexible, the self control You take all these pallets out, you move them to the next machine, oh, yeah. and then you put a completely different job over here. We have tombstones, we yeah. have uh, two vices in a row, you can flip the jaws around, right? It, you yeah, have yeah. a lot of options. Yeah. And then all this stuff is modeled in NX? Yes. Yeah, that's so awesome. that's kind of our thing, is everything needs to be modeled in the computer before you run the part. There's no there's no excuses like, oh, I didn't see this, or, or I made a mistake yeah, setting yeah. up the job, right? right? If it matches here and it matches in the computer, yeah. there should be zero issues. Yeah, yeah. NX is just Fusion before Fusion existed, right? Okay. I mean, it's more powerful, but I don't have much experience with Fusion. Yeah, I yeah. kind of dabbled once or twice, but I mean, you have CAD, you have CAM, you have uh, uh, floating licenses, so that's how we operate uh, the shop, where we have uh, base model seats, right? And all the five axis simulation, it's all floating. So huh. this guy closes it on one computer, I can use it over here instantly. You have to close NX or just like no, the No, just that module. Oh, that's super nice. So it, it makes it easier, you don't have to buy so many expensive seats, right? Yeah. Like yeah. we have three seats of base, we have a five axis add-on, only one, and we have okay. one simulation module for four guys. Sometimes it's annoying, hey, can you, can you close that real quick, I need to use it? <laughs> right. But I mean, at five to seven grand a, a module, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It starts to add up. How do you guys communicate within the shop? Uh, Microsoft Teams. So you message each yeah. other. Okay, you don't call or walk around. I mean, most of the time you can find somebody out here or Teams is what we really do. We have one employee that works remotely still. Okay. So it's like she's in the shop between Pro That's Shop funny. and Teams. Yeah. It's like she's sitting in the office. I don't have to go, I don't have to go look for her, right? We yeah, yeah, have yeah. everything on okay. digital. Preloaded blanks. Oh, that's cool. That's, a, that's, that's a our fixture. second off fixture that's that he was running, basically. Cool. So we, we load the first off. That's off zero, basically, here, yep, though? on like, a vertical uh, somewhere. Okay. They load it in those chunk vices, which are really good. Yeah. They break it off, then they put it on here, they run it through the inspection. What's that material? 304. Wow, so okay. It's plate. Well, it's just the only way to provide our value, right? I mean, yeah. there, there's a, a huge gamut of shops that can do 80% of the work. Yeah. It's so competitive now. Yeah. With all these machines that have entered the market now, the price points are coming down. Right. Uh, so it's like for us to stay to stay on the higher end, we need to start doing stuff that's outside of the norm. Yeah. But this is a pretty simple part, but there's a lot of tools. There's probably 60 tools to make this part. This has an external tool. Yes. Night. That's awesome. So we bought the oh. first machine, which is which is what's nice about Grove. Is we bought the first machine, standalone, 34 tools, no automation. Oh, yeah. Got it running. Then we, then we needed, hey, we want to upgrade the machine. Mm -hmm. We'll buy a second one. Okay. We want to retrofit the tool magazine on the first one. Oh. We want to add the auto, the air through the table on the first one, mm -hmm. and we'll buy the second one to do the same thing. So yeah. they did it all at once, and it wasn't like it wasn't like you bought the machine and this is, is what it is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have other builders that no, you bought it. You want more options? It's five years old. Buy some. Buy a new one. Buy a new one, right? Basically, the machine goes into a loop and it just waits for a signal from the robot. Open door, okay. yeah. low part. The, the cell controller sends the program for the pallet, so okay. there's no hand editing at the control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to worry about anybody doing anything. Um, That's cool. Yeah, and the nice thing about the Aurora stuff is, say 10 years from now, this robot, all it does is pick up a pallet, and every every hour, two hours, 30 minutes, it loads a new one in, right? Yeah. This is never gonna wear out. Yeah. In yeah. 10 years from now, when this machine is beat to, right? I yeah. can move this to another machine and still use it like it's brand new. That's awesome, right, right. And actually, this one we bought used, it's like an 05. Really? So, right? I mean, yeah. and here's like a 2015. It's the same robot. It's the same everything. Yeah. You really like, I don't know if there's a name for it, but that articulating arm style versus like an actual articulated robot. Right. The, the, it just seems like a very well, for, solid for us, style. Well, for us, pallet loading is our, is our thing, right? Because yeah. we do so many different jobs. We can't change robot yeah. grippers mm -hmm. and, and custom, custom fixturing. 
the pallet, anything you picture to that pallet now, you can load in with it. There's no teaching, there's no nothing. Yeah, yeah, right. So, do you do any material loading or is it no, all pallet? Not yet. Oh, not yet. So no. you are, you're not against it. Yeah, we're, we're talking about it on the NTX about doing some sort of pup loader. Oh, yeah. yeah. You just got it. Like, literally, you just got a new machine. Yeah, about two, three weeks ago. Yeah, that's new. Yeah, that's new. That's awesome. So, okay. That's something we've been shopping for for years, right? I, I kind of wanted to do mill turn work, but it's to, to, from doing five axis milling and then going to five axis turning. It's way different. Clearances, yeah, but, but tooling. It seemed, and, it seemed like you made that decision. I mean, not out of nowhere, but right. like. Pretty no, I've been shopping for a while. I mean, I just yeah. didn't talk about it that much. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, we all know Rob wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't let her go. Right. So you know, you get, eventually you gotta. Yeah, I, mean, I was probably bugging because it's e easy, right? Lower barrier to entry by a used machine. Sure. Learn, learn the process. Learn how we're gonna do all of our work holding. Than it is to go out and buy a brand new machine at right. twice, three times the cost. I think that technically would have still been a new machine, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many hours we 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 run everything here. Right. I mean, we we put we tw twenty hours a day on a machine. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, you're getting th three, three thousand, four thousand hours a year yeah, out of spindles. At least. <laughs> I mean, our, like our Yazdas are, are probably our most ran machine. It's like twenty-five thousand hours of spindle time, it's crazy. and it's a two thousand sixteen, right? We just run as much as we can through them. <laughs> oh, it's, it's how we're able to produce as much as we are with the, the, the limited people, the yeah, limited. Yeah. Space but that's what it's and, all about, right? I was reading your website, and you guys kind of pride yourselves on yes. I mean, it's high end work, but you are low overhead, focused right. on the end value of the customer. Right. At the end of the day. Um, the business side of this is you got to sell your work. I mean, sure. you're not the only person, right, that can that, that can run right. this kind of stuff. So is this is a Gen Zero as well? This is a Gen One. Gen One, okay. So this is the machine that we bought, and then added the automation on both of them. Yeah. They added the tool changer as well. Yeah, that's great. The, I can't believe that it only has 34 without. A, the yeah. New, so the, the new ones are the better, single, right? The single machine has a disc in there, right? Yeah, and yeah. These external mags just hand off into the disc. What? And these are HSK 63s? Yes, 16,000. Yeah. So they're working on a new setup here. Cool. And that's kind of thing. Another another fixture that we can move from this machine to here. Yeah. So our 550, everything is compatible. Yeah. And the 350 is just the size of the work envelope. In, yeah. The pallet, the pallet 600 millimeters, and this Got is it. both of these are Grove fixed tables. Yeah. So I know the newer the newer models they're building have the removable pallet, a little bit more yeah. common. The fixed table you kind of have to order, but it's a little bit shorter, so you get better stack up when you're adding the aftermarket oh, automation. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, right, right. I Which, think the Grove pallet's about 50 millimeters above center. Two this inches. Is, this is a little bit below. Got it. Yeah. Oh. I'll tell you the one thing I got to throw a lot of respect to Grove for is we just bought uh, a 400 millimeter horizontal, and it was kind of surprising how relatively little uh, weight you were allowed to add in terms of the tombstone, work holding, part material, so forth. You know, a lot of times it was like. 880,000 pounds total. These groves have similar, if not higher, capacity, and they're doing full five yeah, axis I mean, if you look articulation. Yeah, the motor behind on that A axis. It is huge, right? It's, and this is a torque motor, or this is These a gear? These are both torque motors. Okay. So A and B on this one are torque. Got that it. one that is the gear. gear. Got it. And then this is a dual stack on the Y column for the okay. for the Y axis. A little bit more rigid, a little faster. Yeah. But I mean, 2014, 2017, right? There's incremental changes. Sure. The whole growth thing that's, you're right, like it's become a lot less unfamiliar. Right. And, but like the whole horizontal five axis, was that, did you get that right away so or was we, it something? We bought the first one. My thing was that I wanted to buy, because our first five axis at right, the Quasar was a Siemens control. Yeah. So there's very few builders that say, Siemens is our standard. This is what we want to sell you. Yeah. So there's a couple a couple options, right? Yeah. The other option I heard a lot of bad reviews about, so I was like, well, let's give Grove a try. Yeah. And it all kind of fell into place. Yeah. But like compared to Amish's DMU, like completely right. different machine. Right. It couldn't be more different as a five right. axis. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the spindle nose too, versus the traditional like like Amish's, uh, yeah, yeah. He has tr he has uh, problems with part stack up, right? His spindle yeah. nose is huge. Versus this Grove is almost half yeah. the size of the, yeah. the spindle nose. The spindle retracts all the way into the tunnel. For a tool change, means you don't have any concern. Right. You have full, basically full use of your work envelope, even when you're doing right. things like tool changes. Yeah. Do you care so about I, that? I can show you on the other machine where we're doing parts that fill the work envelope. Yeah. And when it swings, because on Grove, your limitation is now is your part stack up when it swings, right? You okay. can't hit the front of the tunnel. Okay. So that's yeah. kind of the thing you have to be aware of now is your part height can only be so tall. But I mean, I put parts on that 550 that have max the envelope and. You're drilling a hole 13 I've inches seen those, long, right? They almost look like like big tire yeah. rims. They're crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of stuff where it's really helpful. Um, you're not having to dance around a part to, try to avoid smacking it with the yeah, drill yeah, as the yeah, tool yeah, changes. Right. And, right. Right. I'll tell you, that's the other fun thing. Like in this WhatsApp group where Dennis chimes in, it's like these huge parts where it's like you know certain GD and T dimensions or unconstrained flatness tolerances right. across 30 inches. Like 
I would never touch that job. Yeah, it's I mean, if you really were told impressive. me we were doing these parts 10 years ago, I'd have been like, no way. There's no way you can make these. There's no way I'm going to be doing them, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just how, how much the shops kind of transformed just yeah. so quickly. So, so what's your what's your background? You Obviously, it's a family business, so you grew yeah, up... Yeah, so my in, dad started the shop, right? He was working for somebody else in like the early 90s and said, you know what, I can do this better. I'm working hard as it is. Why don't I give it a shot for myself? And then he built the company to a certain spot. Obviously, Silicon Valley economy up and down. Semiconductors, a big driving industry there. You you, you say that, but I, if you had told me there are no machine shops in the San Francisco Bay Area, I would have totally believed you. Like I don't. I mean, as an outsider, there's four thousand shops. Really? Right? Yeah. It's even so where weird. we were in Morgan Hill, there's probably eight big shops in Morgan Hill. Really? Twenty small shops. And that is because of and related to the technology I space. Think applied, yeah, applied materials, LAM research. So funny. Apple's headquarters there. Facebook yeah. has shops there now. I mean, I know this a little bit because of hanging out with you and right. some of these guys. But but you know, as a layman, you don't think Apple can Apple. I mean, yes, Apple makes iPhones and right. iPhones, but you don't think of them as a user consumer of machine right. tools. Yeah, I mean, applied materials like LAM research, all the semiconductor parts. The head of it is there, right? All yeah. those damn shops with 100 machines, yeah. 150 machines building chambers and other components for uh, chip making machines. Yeah, yeah sure. Crazy. So, I mean, basically, that work all funnels out, right? Yeah. There's tier one, then they funnel them out as they get busy, and that's kind of how the shop was started. Yeah. And But as that, that industry is a huge roller coaster. It's right. feast or famine, 100%. So my dad ran, ran the, the gamut, feast or famine. You're in one bay, you get busy, you expand to bay two. Yeah. Then I remember as a kid, we had bay three, right? And then when I got back in in 2008, 2007, we're down to one bay, we just Jeez. closed bay two. So wow. it's one of those things where we rode the roller coaster our whole lives. Yeah, you don't mind that. I mean, it's just the industry. It's just. And not everyone's. I'm not, I'm not cut out for that, man. I uh, <laughs> well, I like still young, growing right? steady. My dad at the time is probably forty, a little bit more risk, right? He was yeah. willing to deal with the risk. And yeah. now I'm I'm 32, right? So this is my chance to kind of do something for the next eight years. Sure. Then sure. then you kind of have to look about long term effects, right? right? We can right. still recover from from situations at this yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah. But like I, I, I know you. I know you work your butt off because I know when you're online right. messaging. But like, I don't get the sense that you don't sleep at night. Like, no, I mean, no. We we still live normal lives, right? It's yeah. just when we're here, we're here. Yeah. This is. Yeah. It's hard to go home sometimes to disconnect, right? Yes. You it have is. a real hot job. It's something you've never done before. You get home, you're eating dinner, you're thinking about it, right? You, you can't turn pass. it off sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. My yeah. wife's like, just go outside and you walk the dog. <laughs> Right, you're like, you're like, oh, I could move that fixture clamp this way. Right. And you're like, I got to fold it. Yeah, she'll be here in a little bit. You meet her. She's probably the whole reason that I'm still sane. And I'm surprised she's put up with it for so long. We met really young. We've been together for 10 or 11 years yeah. now. And she's the MVP because she puts up with me outside of the shop. That's awesome. I didn't expect to see a manual bridge port. This is what we use for, for uh, assembling pins, tapping, oh, tapping okay. the parts offline. Like Except titanium, if we have a low volume part, couple holes, we'll tap them offline with oil, right? Because yeah, right. thread milling's pretty slow and there's advantages to doing some ma manual labor. Got it. Well, yeah, we use our assembly, our service grinder is oh, used, well. used for grinding tools, right? This is all we use this for is necking tools. Necking tools down. Usually if we have to do something more complex, we'll send it to a tool grinding house. Yes. So we got the bug, hey, let's move. Yeah. And you start researching, right? Well, the industrial market in the whole country is, is limited to Tight. nothing. Yeah. So I found this place. The guy wanted to rent it for, uh, rent it to us, and I'm like, we can't add the infrastructure here yeah. to move our big our big shop. So I just hounded him every couple weeks for probably three months, and he yeah. decided, you know what? Okay, I'll sell it to you. It was a complete shell, right? There's there's no power ran here. It only had like 400 amps at 208. Uh, there was no there was very limited insulation. Okay. So basically, out in the warehouse, it was just insulation, air conditioning. We upgraded oh. the power. We put 1,200 amps at 480. So here's our two pallet machine from Grove. Man, a 550 actually feels a lot bigger when you just were next yeah. to a 350. And this is Grove's two pallet design. Okay. So we bought this machine actually used. They're really good. They, went, they went, We shipped it to them before we had space for it. Okay. They went through it. They added the upgraded spindle. They added some software options. Oh. They held it for me for six months because I had nowhere to put it. Yeah. So this was actually one of the first machines delivered to Idaho. No kidding. Huh. So, Interesting yeah. little fixture. So you do a lot out of round bar, right? Yeah, round bar for production is significantly cheaper, easier to easier to get. Yeah. So. And so, ton, is that why we're going to see a sea of brothers? Is the yeah. op, op zero work? Yeah, op zero, op three, right? So we try to do all oh. of our complicated part work up here, get as much of the part as we can. Yeah. And then it goes onto a brother, and you don't mind leaving the brother off while the while the groves produce parts, right? That are yeah. one tenth the cost. Yeah, yeah, right. Literally. So, yeah. That's cool. So we do a lot of custom fixers, just trying to get more parts on the table. Yeah. This machine is a two pallet. We do a lot of R&D here because it can't run while nobody's here. So we do Got a lot it. of our, our two-piece prototypes and... Yeah. Is there, 
would you want this to have more automation on it or is it just wasn't with with, with how old it was right i was just happy to get it at a good price yeah. grove grove went through it told me this machine's good to go yeah so this machine it's, it's nice to have a machine that's not tied up with work all the time right this yeah, is kind of yeah. like you can shuffle in a job make five pieces yeah. leave it off for a day come back tomorrow okay this is our emergency rush rush machine oh that's nice yeah, yeah. it is like, like we're at that point too now where we don't really have like a, a normally free spindle like a tool right. room within the shop and that's not fun right, right? You, you need that ability that's to what go we test struggled something. with for eight years that's ever since we started booming right it's like you have all the machines especially the verticals that's our biggest our struggle is you have the verticals you set them up for jobs right yeah. well then you have a fixture plate you need to make it's big it takes up the whole travel but you're making production parts on it that are this big now you got to rip everything off yeah, to go yeah. prep one fixture plate right so we started building a lot of modular fixture now for like that you'll see the other cell for we can do a fixture plate without having to do any setup work second time i've seen the are these the ingersoll no that's snap on interesting it looks like the ingersoll the digital torque yeah you like those yeah so on the on the dovetail fixturing the biggest uh thing you can do wrong is over torque him right because okay. you deform the dovetail the clamps that we use are not made out of hardened steel for the purpose of they, they don't deform the part Okay. So if you over clamp them, you deform the clamps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we build a lot of clamps and just throw them away after so much, so much okay. use. And Got it. Is that based on just visual wear? Or like, you know, Pro Shop doesn't have a way of telling you when the right. clamps should be. Right, yeah. The out. operators running the machines at this level yeah. need to be aware of checking things like that, right? As you're loading the part, you're looking that the clamp is seated on the dovetail. It's really apparent when the, when the top okay. of the clamp is flared yeah. out. We had this literally before I went to the airport yesterday, we had this problem where um, our Sandvik 8. 60 or 870, whatever the insert right. version is, uh, the drill body blew up on us. And I have no complaints, these things are great. And they have told us, you, you have to replace the drill body about every 20 inserts or so. I don't have a good way of tracking right. 20 insert changes. Right. I mean, you can come up with a fancy sure. systems, but it, they don't really work. Yeah, I mean, the more systems you add at a certain level, a certain company size, right? Everyone's wearing so many hats. Yeah. There's only so much you can track. And some machines we're doing production, we have like Excel spreadsheets. Because yeah. we're running a lot of new jobs, right? You might get a job and they want 10,000 pieces, right? So how do you know what the tool life's going to be in this cutting application yeah, yeah, yeah. on this machine? So we kind of do a learning process. It's Excel at the control. Because if you notice, every machine now has a computer. So oh, I didn't notice that. So guys all have access to, okay. to computers at every yeah, spindle. Yeah. Right. And these are cheap little solid state computers. The whole setup only costs, I think, $400. Really? Water, keyboard. Just yeah. like a little cube thing? Yeah. No kidding. Huh. So this was Pro Shop saying we bought Pro Shop right, and they're yeah. like, you need to set up a computer. It's really helpful for the guys that have access to everything at the floor. Yeah, here's what we recommend, and we went full bore. We we added the computers to all the machines, and so no NX on this. It's just Pro Shop. So basically, what we do here is you have Pro Shop right. Yeah. But we live off of remote desktop. Okay. So now I log into my desk from Love the office. It. It's nice to be able to make tweaks at the machine. We used to have paper, right? You run a first no. part. You're over here writing notes. You no, go I back know. to the office, make all your changes, yeah. and now you're doing it as as you go. Yeah. I remember the first time I ever heard Yazda, uh, and I didn't know the brand. It was at uh, the Tom Lipton tour at uh, the Berkeley Lab in uh, oh, Lawrence, yeah. Lawrence Berkeley. Yeah. They had like an EDM process that was then getting moved over from EDM to a different machine tool, and they replaced it with a Yazda because the Yazda was so good and so accurate that it could do what the EDM did and the next machine tool. They are phenomenal right. machines. Everyone talks about, oh, I need huge production orders to justify buying expensive machines, right? Mm -hmm. And it's actually the opposite. You need the best machine you can for the prototype work because uh, how, how, you can't afford to make three parts to get the first one right, right? You're gonna make 10,000, you can do an extra day of setup, dialing everything in, using probing. You're gonna make one part, you spend half the time fighting the machine. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. what we experienced in the beginning, huh. was fighting the machine more than you were making parts. Interesting. You warm the spindle up, you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's so critical, you leave it sit, you better, you better run, run the warm up again. These machines, you literally cut parts, it sits idle, you go check it, you come back. There's no so extra solid. work. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. This machine has 25,190 runtime hours. That's runtime. That's not like idle time, right? Yeah. That's cutting. We try to keep 20 hours on here so we can put new jobs in during the day, but at night it's always running. Yeah. Saturdays it's always running. This was our first automation. Sure. So we sure. got the Grove, right? Yep. Ready for a second machine. Grove didn't have any of their own automation at the time. Long lead times to make changes. Yep. So this machine in stock, right? Within three weeks it was on our floor and we were making parts. Yeah. 300 tools. 33 Serious? pallets. Yeah. 300? Can we see the tool yeah. chain? And this just comes, literally, it's one unit. It's everything like... Yeah, everything is as it is. There's no options. I mean, you buy yeah. it with the high pressure pump you want. Yeah. But this is it, right? So you got this whole magazine here. 
<laughs> we keep tools one through 250 in the machine. You never okay. take them out. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you that's do your prototypes awesome. with. Aluminum, plastic, this is where they go. We keep so many hours a week for production to keep okay. the machine running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can you can shuffle in with the resident tools any new parts out of aluminum or plastic. Sure, sure, sure. But if you had a run for 10,000, would you do a prototype here and then move it over to a Grove or something More than likely, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Depending on the customer, how fast they need the prototypes, right? And a lot of okay. times you don't want to set up the machine here and they have different tooling interface. You have yeah, yeah, yeah. this BT40. You don't do the kind of work though, like I hear with medical work where if you change the uh, cutting brand or the coolant a right. year later, you have to go get approval again. So we're in so many different industries and so many, we have some jobs that are like that. If you change okay. the process, the machine, you, you have to get it requalified, right? Okay. But a lot of the times, prototype work, you're doing a lot of, of R&D. Then they come back and they want one, then they want okay. five, now they want 50. Okay, we'll move it over here now. And all our tooling's modular, so a fixture that goes on the Oz that goes in the Grove. Did you have a choice on the spindle taper on this machine? So it, it came only one option, BT40. And at the time, no BT40 in the shop, right? I'm like, no, I don't want this machine because it's BT40. But you ask me now, seven years later, six years later, it's like, I, I'm actually glad it was that way because these holders we buy don't oh, leave this area. They don't, yeah, that's yeah. funny. So we buy and a this couple all, extra at a yeah. time. This is Cap 40 stuff. This is our general tool plate Oh, area. I see. Okay, yeah. so the BT, because the BT40 and Cap 40 is hard to tell the difference, right? Yeah, so the BT40, the flange is thicker. So okay. Compare it to a Cap 40. Self-contained unit, high pressure in the coolant chiller here on the end, tool magazine, yep. spindle chiller, ball oh. screw chiller, got the vellum uh, filters we started switching to. Yeah, we just got those from that same, yeah. the guy on Insta. Uh, yeah. yeah, this would be great. Okay. But you have coolant chillers as well on most yes. of your machines? Well, anything running un uh, unattended. Uh, I'm very So a couple of them right now aren't hooked up because we're still putting the pieces together from the big move, right? Yeah. Infrastructure and yeah. usually it, it only matters when you're doing bigger aluminum parts, right? Thermal expansion yep. on a big aluminum plate is going to be a lot different than a part that fits in your palm of your hand. Right. So, but it does make a difference. You don't care what the temperature is, you just want it stable. So, so we set it to ambient, 70 degrees, yeah, yeah. keep it within two degrees, plus okay. or minus. We have some of the chip blaster units that are kind of mobile, right? So we're going to do a big plate. We started noticing, you, you check the part on the machine, it's good. Bring it in inspection, it's bad. What? Right? And you're like, the, the guys couldn't figure out what it was. I rolled the coolant chiller over there, plugged it in, boom, now the parts are perfect. Wait, can, can we see one of these? Sure. I didn't realize there was such a thing as a mobile issue. Well, it's not really meant to be mobile, but yeah, right, yeah. with temp power and, and, Any, and a couple is, hoses, right? right, right. Temp. Yeah, I love it. Well, this guy we oh, had no running kidding. on one of the grubs before we moved, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So awesome. we just rolled it over here. You, you have a, an intake hose, you have an outtake hose, sure. you have a, a temp power cord, boom. Right. Now, you're, now this machine's coolant chilled. And it's just a condenser or just a yeah, it's a refrigeration system? Yeah, yeah. Huh. That's slick. So it turns on, circulates the coolant, pumps it back yeah. in. It has nothing to do with the coolant. It's not in line. It's just, it's just a, yeah. it's just a so separate. You pull from one side of the tank and pump it to the other yeah, side. Right. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. And it turns on and off and runs, I don't know, five minutes every hour. Well, that's it. Depending on, depending on the sump volume, right? And how much you're running it. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. But you're trying to hold five tenths on a big plate on hold distances, right? Yeah. And you're putting 90 degree coolant or 80 degree coolant on the plate. Yeah. It's going to expand. You're going to cut it. It's not going to be right anymore. And the first thing you do is the machine, right? The machine's no good. The machine's no good. What's wrong with the machine? Right. What's wrong with the CMM, right? right? Nobody wants to admit that there's another variable that you didn't think of. Yeah. So the only reason we know is because we've done it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this a dock or grade? No, all grade level. All grade. Three okay. grade level doors. We kind of left the back one for machine, new machinery. New machines all go in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, what the was that? It didn't turn out to be as big as I had thought it to be. <laughs> I was going to say, it does, you were going to, you were right, it does feel right. full already. When you see an overhead view, and, and then you, and you realize I didn't have the NTX, I didn't have that Methods Vertical and that Grobe pallet changer, right? Three machines. Yeah. I had it on 6,000 square feet of warehouse. This is 15,000. We utilize every square inch of that yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. must, I must have 10 revisions of, of layouts of the floor plan over there over the years. Move this machine sideways, push it back. Okay, we can put two more here. Kind of a tool crib, extra tools, and yep. you're doing a prototype, right? And shipping shipping holders versus having them here. Yeah, yeah. There's Look a certain level of over the years they've just accumulated. Dude, that stuff. is species. Oh, you got some of the right angle heads. Yeah. You like those? I haven't got in implemented these two, but we've been using this company a lot lately. This EL tool. Okay. These are coolant powered now. Okay. So no modification needed to be done on the on the machine. Yeah. It has a gear drive in here. You don't need a tool block. No, you awesome. tool change them right through the machine. Yeah. So Grove can cool. index the spindle, so you can you can either use the head down inside the part, or you can and you can flip the head upside down and uh, go the other way, way. Uh, or rotate the table depending on what you want to do. Yeah. And is it high pressure? It has to be high yeah. through spindle. I think 500 psi on that Grove that we have gets us. I think, I think the calculation was like 5,000 RPM. Cool. And you're doing like weird holes on the inside of a part. Right? You're not doing production with them. Yeah. 
But probe the to add a, a ninety degree head like this in there is a big change. To be able to really? change it in and out of the machine. Oh, I see. Because of the way their arm works and stuff. Okay. So it's like, well, with it, the jobs we use it for, we make four at a time, right? So just deal yeah, with these it. for now. Okay. So these will go through the tool changer. That's crazy. But they just okay. won't. You can't use the other style. Yeah. yeah. We went to shrink fit a long time ago. There wasn't okay. a Rego fix really advertised back then. Hydraulics are good for finishing, but for roughing, it's strictly street fit. Oh my God, look at all that. Look at those. So those are all profiles. holders I had custom made. Can we see one? Yeah. That's a crazy, and that's a shrink fit profile to get just access. Yeah. Those are balancing points yes. then? Okay, I got so these it. These are made by Parlec for us. I drew it up in SolidWorks, right? Yeah, yeah. Or at NX. Yeah. Sent yeah. them a model, hey, can you make these for me? We want to buy 20 at a time of four different sizes. And you'd be surprised at how cost effective it really is. No kidding. Yeah. Huh. And then you put those on the Heimer and... So I bought this balancer used, haven't had a chance to mess with it yet. It's been sitting here, we drug it to the shop in California, we drug it here. It's funny. It's one of those things where one day we'll get it hooked up, but... Uh, yeah. Cool. You can usually tell, and the groves have built in on the, on the back end of the machine. You turn the spindle on, there's a, there's a back end sensor for vibration. Okay. So you can see if there's a holder balancing, you play with the RPM. Oh, you can, okay. You can kind of know, it's not like you're running blind. Yeah, yeah, got so. it. It's funny how small 30 tapers right. now look. Holy cow. We use a ton of these Mari tool, like really short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep the gauge length down. Yeah, BT30, it's, I mean, it's huge, the, the gauge length. That's just a side lock, too. Yeah. 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 We've had a lot of good luck. We use a lot of the YG and, and Mari tool right. stuff, and it's fine. People knock on side lock. I'm right. like, no, 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 we get along fine. No, with I it. mean, we've done side lock for years, right? I so said, when I came in, side lock, we are calling. That's all we had, yeah, right? Yeah. There was no uh, hydraulic holders. You want to buy a $500 holder, you're nuts. Get out of yeah, here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So oh, strength fit we found is a good balance to cost for performance, right? Was it nerve wracking to lay this shop out? I mean, yeah, out? I mean, we probably we probably have poor vision on the first layout, right? It's like, how much space do you leave, right? We're, we're so conscious back there on, oh, we don't have enough room, but don't leave too much room because you might need it, right? Yeah, and sure. How much space is enough space between machines? And... Most of your parts are small though, so it's not like you have to get forklifts up to the machine. Yeah, we don't have any machine, any jobs that need cranes or. Yeah. These are Aurel Electra holders, right? So they come, they're just brass locks. I their... machine the pocket, the set no screws. Key. Oh, that's hilarious. They're we, buy, we, we have a, a big run to do, right? And round material is significantly cheaper than cup plate, and, but I don't want to have to have a guy sit there and do off zero on 10,000 parts. So this will allow us to get access, hold the blanks, no and not have to do any prep work. Yeah, and you yeah. buy a saw cut or you yeah, saw it? Yeah, we buy a hold okay. uh, saw cut to like, Plus or minus 30 thou. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this thing has been running now, uh, uh, I think probably two months. This is, this is the, we're at the backside of a pair of brothers, right? Yeah. These are five axis machines or, or three plus two. We start talking about getting enough, enough parts in a robot or, or an automation solution to run 12 hours in parts this big, right? You start yeah. getting expensive. Pallets, yeah. you need to buy 96 pallets. So this yeah. is a cost effective way I can do. Spend 100 grand on pallets. Yeah. So you buy these brass holders from Aroa, they're square, right? It's literally meant for EDMs. Yeah, you, you, save, you save this pulse set, right? But sure. when you're done with it, you just throw this piece away. 40 bucks. Recycle it, Dennis. Recycle, Recycle it. Sure. Uh, Grimswood and I have been talking a ton about this because he's got the Compact 80 on his Kern, right. uh, but it kind of came from Kern. Right. And this idea of adding a second machine that can take a bunch of work off of a right. round numbers, three quarter million dollar machine right. and move it to a hundred thousand dollar machine, it's, it's awesome. That's the purpose of these two machines with this robot and then those three is to pull oh, yeah. positioning work off of the Groves and the Yazda. Anything that production that doesn't need plus or minus two tenths, right? Or yeah. really tight tolerance work, it can live on these. We can offer a cheaper price. Yeah. They're easier to manage, tooling's cheaper, everything's just way more cost effective. Those really are phone booth machines. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. So and these are all set up the same. So all five of these machines are set up with the same trunnion on them. So cool. So we have different, those ones are running the Aroa Chuck. We have a subplate on here. You can put different fixtures, different vices. Okay. Wait, so how does the, is there a single pull stud that's pulling that into that? So this is just a face plate mounted to the machine with just bolt things you on it with dowel okay. pins and bolts. Okay. And got it. So they can move, they can take this, these two off and put one in the center, any mm -hmm. clearance on the sides or. Yeah. And then and it, this machine's so cost effective, you don't care about putting a three axis part and just running it here. You don't, yeah. you don't need to take the table off, right? Yeah. You don't want to run a bunch of three axis work on a Grobe. Like some almost would rather leave the machine off than run the spindle, right? Then versus just use the machine at this this cost level. Got it. Huh. And then this gets run through NX simulation as well? Yes. That's Anything awesome. with the with a tilting table, mm -hmm. additional axis. Yeah. Yeah. And so you've known the brother control now for years. Yeah, I mean my dad was probably one of the first users in the Bay Area. Our first brother was like in nineteen ninety nine. 
Oh, that's really? Cool. And there's actually a couple guys. One guy on Instagram bought it from me, right? And yeah, he's still yeah. using it. It's awesome. So and yeah, the other you, one went to another. You, you kind of see the too. old school down there. That, yeah, that's those probably are 2010s. No. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, so that's we had funny. 99s that were still running, and we had no more floor space. There were 14 tools, uh, only 10,000 RPM, no memory, right? And it's like I hate to give them away because they're great dovetail machines. Right, 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 right. But we had no more space. You look at buying a length stamping unit for the shop, right? Yeah. Or you have a brother in the back corner that costs 15,000 bucks that you could use to do other things other than just stamp material. Yeah. That's kind of my viewpoint, especially because we use a lot of round blanks. So you need to cut, you need to cut a square flat or something. Yeah. Right. That was one of those things where we did them originally. We had the guy dovetail every one of those blanks. We've done this job once before. Yeah. And it's just a oh. time sink, right? The guys have better stuff to do. So yeah. this was a way they, now they can just load it. This would, would have been a good part loading job, right? Instead of having the guy have oh, to fix yeah. the blanks. Yeah. But yeah. who knows what this job's gonna, what these machines are gonna be doing in a year from now? That's all. That all that material gets fixed. There's three more of those in the uh, outside. <laughs> Holy cow! So these are running. Yeah, I mean, we, we hooked up chatter on this, right, just to see yeah, what the yeah, uptime yeah. was on these two machines. Yeah. And he said we're at like 92 percent since he hooked up the monitoring over two months, right? And that's all Monday through Saturday. So one one Aroa can feed either machine. If they both finish at the same time, it just picks one. Yeah, I mean, sort the, of thing. I timed it one day because my buddy was like part loading so much faster, right? So I timed it. It's like 40 seconds. But there's nobody here, so yeah, I yeah. think a row by might be 20 seconds. You might, okay. you might gain a little bit of uh, cycle time. And do you have to do probing in these, or is it just load and run? No, just load and run. Yeah, got it. So it scares me. I, I mean, I haven't done it, so I'm not talking from experience. But loading material, it's not a question of if it's going to fail; it's right. when it's going right. to something. Yeah, gonna when bite it's going to misload, or yeah, yeah, yeah. This, I mean, loading it is the most critical part, right? You come in in the morning, you have a robot, and it misloads something. Right, I feel like there's a higher probability versus having somebody oh, yeah. physically, right? So if you if you loaded that Aroa up and then just left, how long would it run? So it's, it'll run each machine for 12 hours. These two machines run through our second shift. But while it's running right now, you can obviously be loading more in the Aroa so that when everybody leaves at right. four o'clock, it yeah. runs till yeah, four in the they, morning. They, they reload it in the morning. Like I think they do two levels on both sides to feed okay. the machines. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, they have the whole rack loaded. Have you ever implemented or thought about trying to have the same program with two different like operating conditions where where you like so let's say you have a turning job right. or a mill job where it's going to finish at three in the morning right. well where there's like almost like a, a block delete option that's going to take Slow three hours longer but but a little bit more right. tool like have you ever thought about that i mean we kind of running automation right you learn early on that metal removal isn't the number one factor of programming and making parts right it's uptime how many parts can you get done in 24 hours yeah. versus how many you can get done how fast you can make that one part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't push anything here. It's kind of quiet, right? Yeah. Consistent metal removal. We like On this job, we tested a bunch of tools, found an end mill that outperformed everything. I remember you That's saying what that. That's we used. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So just consistency. But by saving a minute, but it stops and breaks a tool and you lose eight hours one night, you just yeah. wiped out your whole minute well, savings. Gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure, sure. And in the beginning, right, I was hard headed. You look on YouTube, you want to run everything as hard as you can, because why not, right? And then yeah. you learn the machine sits idle, the machine sits idle. Right, right. So dial right. it down a little bit. Yeah. yeah, well, especially in the turning world, it's like you know your CNMG inserts right. are only going to last so long in the right. cut. You're you're you got nothing well, to that's do. That's why we don't really have any turning, right? The NTX was the first that's why real I like turning it. machine, right? Because it's like I need if I'm going to do something, I need to be able to run it un right. unattended. How am I going to do that with ten stations, twelve stations? Turret, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so here's the beast. Okay. So our Grove 550, the one you saw when you did your first turn, yeah, yeah, Grove, yeah, 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 has a custom Aroa table for better clearances. So okay. I can run a 400 millimeter pallet in this machine. Normally, Grove sells these with I think uh, I think 500 or 600 millimeter squared. So you have okay. a little bit more interference issues with bigger with smaller the, parts. On the when you have the 600. Yeah. 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 Okay. You get the blocky little pallets, a little bit blockier. Yeah. This you get more clearance, and this is set up to run three different tooling types. Tooling different fixtures. Yeah. Or is it tooling? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we can come into here. I can turn the robot off. Uh, sorry. Does this uh, Aroa also feed the methods? Yes. No. <laughs> Oh, well, that, that is. That was the reason I wanted that it is here. Awesome. And, and we don't really run parts in production on this machine. It's more about being able to quick change fixturing in and out, right? Big okay. heavy parts. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to drive the forklift over and have to load sure. the pallet. One button and it brings it in. <laughs> I so, love it. That's awesome. Well, we got our load station here. Okay. There's three different pallets. So that's our 400 millimeter square. We Which have, is the biggest? Yeah. Okay. We have 200 millimeter uh, round pallets, or 210s, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then we have the 148s that you saw on the grill. Oh, yeah, the little guys. Yeah. Interesting. So no, we, we can share the pallets between the machines. They all have, so wait, that has one center pull stud. These have four corner pull studs? Four corners, and these use a, a ball bearing ring on the inside. Interesting. Yeah. And it so all can, works in the same table? Yes. 
So the smaller one, right, obviously uses the full stud, right? Uh -huh. So these bigger ones here, they use ball bearings on the outside. So this oh. is a separate chuck that gets loaded into that machine for okay. the smaller work. Got it. Yeah. I see. It's so almost like are, an HSK more, taper where it's more full, rigid. Yeah, it's full yeah. contact around the periphery. Right. So and we can hand load those into the other two machines. Okay. So we don't have to do a bigger part. There's, there's limitations on the full sled, right, on that smaller pallet. Mm -hmm. So if we have to do a bigger part, titanium, we'll, load, we'll just manually load it with the bigger pallet. The full sled is still, in, for, in theory, not theory, in practice, a double, dual contact. I mean, it's pulling down along the yeah, circumference. Yeah, there's feet on the bottom that it pulls against, yeah. against pads, but you're yeah. still only one spot. And the bigger, the, the further off the pallet you get, you definitely notice the difference. Yeah. Fair enough. So, oh, sure. On, on tall, yeah, yeah it makes so sense. So we have the we have the, the tooling for those two Aroas now to add it, so we can auto change those as well. Okay. Where is this machine? The... So yeah. So let me turn off the robot. Oh, that is awesome. Did you have this in California? Yes. And it was very tight. <laughs> but not with the methods. Not with the methods. Okay. The methods we added and we got here. Got it. So you have your 550 Grove. Here. Okay, <laughs> here's the machine. Custom table. Oh, so you normally don't ever come in here. Prototype work, right? You're standing at the machine room the first part. Okay. Doing, doing it. bigger stuff. Yeah, you're But you have that other 550 for prototype right. work too. There's certain jobs I like running on this machine because I have all the fixtures already up in the machine. Got it. Right, those Holy frames I've cow, shown yeah, you. Yeah, look at yeah. that big. So I kind of leave the fixtures in the rack. We run yeah. a couple, we, we, we deliver. There might be a revision. We do a couple more. It's yeah. nice to have all the work holding here. Done, yeah. yeah. I, again, I know it's just like old news to you, but that's what I'm excited about for our horizontal is it's like it's like dial apart right. or like part on demand because we're always going to have these fixtures right. and tombstone set up. And if you need more of something, you just load it right. in and hit go. Yeah, I mean, like I was talking earlier about doing prep work, right, on a vertical. And you need to do a part 20 inches, but there's three vices there doing production work. What are you going to yeah. do, right? We yeah. struggled all the time. Now we just transfer that pallet into that method. Yeah, I love Boom, it. Right? It's oh, so I awesome. want to run a production job. Click, take it out. Go. Yeah. Oh, man. So. The, the nice thing, like like Grove, right? Aroa is modular, so you buy the robot, you buy whatever racks you want, you buy whatever gripper attachments you want. Look at they that. They build it to however you want it. And yeah. The, the the U.S. rep here, he knows how I am. I'm like, dude, we need to crunch this in because floor space, right, is a premium. So this is kind of our design about how tight everything is. So these obviously are bolted. Yeah. They have to be bolted because the position has to right. remain there. But interesting how you've got these staggered. You know. So the two the two ones, right? The the two position levels. They're on a radius, so they have to be a certain center point from the robot. Oh. But the single positions where you have better work clearance can be set at an offset. Interesting. Get a little more. Huh. So this is the gripper I was showing you for the 210, the round pallets, right? That's and crazy. It drives over here, drops off, grabs this one, grabs the top level. I love that it's got, I've never, no, I don't think I've ever noticed that, where you've got an actual rotisserie inside a right. rotisserie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, well, it's, it's sometimes, right, bringing a pallet to the load station takes a lot of time. The guy's trying to get out of here. He can open the door on the outside, change right. parts really quickly versus driving each one in and out. Yeah. So we have these positions can all do like 25 inches in round next to each other. And then these bigger ones can do 32. 32 inch parts? Yeah. So if you look That's here, incredible. Right, this, this base plate is like 29 inches. Oh, so the part still overhangs yeah. out a little? <laughs> We've done some now that are that are eight inches tall off of that plate, right? And you're yeah. barely clearing the grove when it swings over. Yeah, that's not. What yeah. is the X, Y, and inch travel? Do you know? Uh, I, think, I think 31 inches in X. Oh, you are really pushing and it. And then we can do a lot of work with polar, right? So you pull up at 90, you come yeah. up at a Y, and then you rotor, you rotary right cut it. So. And you see you see the accuracy and surface finishes are good there? Yeah. I mean, it's just as like you walk around it with yeah. an inbuilt. Yeah. And that, the, the funny thing about this machine, we bought it, right? We didn't have any bigger work, and yeah, yeah, yeah. we were just doing small stuff, right? It's like, well, it costs that much more to go to the bigger machine. We already have two smaller ones. Let's let's take a take a risk here. First job comes in, barely squeezes in the travel of the machine. It's like, we should have bought the 750. <laughs> I was going to say, will this work with the 750 you're going to buy? No, because the weight capacity is too small. <laughs> So this, wake, this robot is their heavier duty one. There's very few of them in the country. They can do a thousand pounds. That's incredible. It can articulate out a thousand pounds. Yep. So that's why they have the different gripper style, right? So you see these are squares. This head, this is their heavy duty gripper. Yeah, how is it biting onto that? What is so the- So there's a dovetail that expands, right? The, the block comes in here and you have some pins that hold it in oh, and then this expands and wedges it in. Got it. So it's, but it's really the dovetails that are carrying the weight. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I needed to be able to run the smaller parts like the other, right? We didn't have yeah. any bigger work. But then yeah. now we can change in a bigger part, put it away at night, it runs this little job. We had to custom build this bracket, okay, I was right? Gonna, it looks like it's a machine. So the robot came in, they gave me everything I needed. 
oh, okay, I wanted 900, 900 millimeter clearance everywhere, right? Oh. Okay, so now mount 900 millimeters on the center of this pallet. It hits their gripper link. So that's why you notice all of the pallets that are bigger are on a little riser. So the pallet, yeah, yeah. the part actually overhangs yeah. way up here. Oh, that's crazy. And I have it all modeled up, so it's like, I mean, we're talking, we're talking like an inch here if the part, everything fits. And <laughs> there's this one job we do all the time. We make a hundred a week or eighty a week or whatever. It runs at night, twelve hours a day, six days a week. And then the, the daytime, it's fair game, whatever you want to make on here. You had to cut the slab for the groves. Yeah. So oh, in California, we only did one slab for the big machine. This machine's like. 50,000 pounds in the 350s. We didn't own the building. We were just renting. The owner at the time said, no, you can't cut my floor. So they were just on regular six inch concrete. Wow. So here we, okay, we're gonna do it right, right? We put the floor in, put the air conditioning, yeah. insulation. We just tried to do everything in advance. What's the floor then under the- These are uh, 18 inches thick. <laughs> yep, so it's completely managed from here. We screen mirror the, the so what, what are we looking at? This is the cell controller of the robot. Okay. So this basically, you have your 550, what it's running, the methods machine, all your racks, what programs uh, are on each pallet. Okay. And we screen mirror it to the other side. So if you're at the methods, you can call a pallet in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what is, I mean, I know methods as like a machine tool dealer really right. more, right? But they're making, or they're- so they're private labeled, yeah. right? They had a machine built for them to their specs. Mm -hmm. I needed a machine that could take some of the, the bigger parts, all the prep work, the first yeah. ops, the fixture building. I didn't want to tie up the grove doing that, right? We only had one at the time that could do something that big. So this was a cost-effective way to get 35 inches of, of wide travel. Why? But is it a, it's a C-frame? Yeah. But it's, this thing's 42,000 pounds. Oh my it's, gosh. It's, it's really heavy. And it cuts really flat parts. Yeah. I've been really impressed with how accurate this thing is. So, so most of the builders stop at like 29.9, right? Yeah. And they have 30 tools. So this was 35 inches of wide, 40 tools. We, we added the Aroa chuck. We added the Aroa Look at that curved vice. Can you open the door? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Is it just the eight inch? It looks huge. The Kurt, or maybe it's yeah, the Kurt eight inch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. And there's gosh. a little fifth axis five inch self centering device. Yeah, yeah. Holy cow. So we're doing a prototype job right now, right? This this is kind of machine. We just shuffle I some jobs it. in and out. You can actually step into yeah. the enclosure. That's great. And, and the benefit of the Arella, right? Loading this in the beginning when I didn't oh have the Arella hooked up, right. trying to clamp a part of this eight inch vice, man. It oh, was yeah. brutal. You're down here. Now yeah. we load it at the load station, just transfer it with the robot. Well, yeah, or God forbid, trying to hand load a tool in the right. spindle. That's not going to happen. You know, get, put a swimming suit on. We had this delivered as well with the 550 here at the same time in like yeah. June yeah. before we got here. Cool. Like I said, 42,000 pounds. That was what sold me on it. Wait. Jeez, yeah. If you're trying to cut flatness, right? You can't have the thing twisting. It needs to be yeah. heavy. Yeah. I hear you. Oh, well, we they just installed this upgraded chip conveyor. Henning built this custom dual conveyor. Crazy. Big U-shaped tank. Yeah, yeah. It, they built like an air circulation, so your coolant with the with, as long as the door is closed on the machine, the chip conveyor is always running. It's always circulating your coolant. Coolant keeping the yeah. Yeah, yeah so you don't yeah. have dead spots with, with bacteria or whatever. Yep. Interesting. Dual, dual exits. So you don't have a pucker, a briquette. No. We got, a, we got a recycling company here that handles it. Yeah. Does it, it. The maintenance, is, I mean, if you look at the maintenance on one of those machines, I I it never seemed like says, it penciled out. Yeah. It's like, I, I feel like we're in the business of making parts, let the chip guys handle the chips. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. Maybe if we were bigger, right? But we only produce so much volume. It's, I don't feel like it's necessary at this point. Yeah. So our original turning machine, <laughs> this is the, the first machine I ever bought while I worked at the shop, right? Okay. Like, we didn't have any turning at the time. We had a few Fidels, we had a few brothers, we were doing milled parts. The customer that we made parts for said, hey, can you do this turn job? Mm -hmm. Me, I'm like, sure, we'll do it, right? And it's like, we bought this machine, I think, uh, second hand from a guy who didn't need it anymore, and here we are. How long? Uh, 15, 15 years, years later, later yeah. right? And it still cuts the same the same as it did when we bought it used. And this isn't even a Doosan, it's a Daewoo before Doosan was even. Oh, really? Yeah, it's huh. like right in the transition period. Just a two axis Two axis wave, wave. yeah. Rock and roll, though. Yeah. Just go. Like, a lot of the jobs we do, you need a bearing fit, right? To go throw it on the yeah, five axis. Yeah, right, so we right. don't really do a ton of commodity turning work. Yeah. How are you getting along on NX turning? Struggling a little bit. And there's only so much time to commit to it, right? Oh, know, we we know, bought yeah. the machine and we're kind of using it like a uh, like a dual spindle, dual turret. Yeah. We're not really doing any milling with it. So right. it's like that job will run for six months and we'll worry about what we're going to put on it. Okay. Next. So the NGX, you had a specific part job yeah. in mind. We okay. were doing the part here and it, we couldn't get enough parts between the, the mating pieces off Got one it. spindle. So it's yeah. like, we're going to buy something and it went to, we'll just buy an NLX, right? I want to buy a high end turning machine, yeah. Yeah. no stock. Who else has uh, a high end turning machine? No stock. 
Interesting. So it's like, a, and then it's like, okay, we can get you a dual spindle, dual turret, but then what are we gonna do with that machine when that production job yeah, goes yeah. away? Yeah. So then, here we go, convince myself now. Well, there's a lot more flexibility than right. NT. I mean, it's a complicated machine too, but. But how quickly you go from wanting to buy a machine at about 180, now you're at, right? Three times the cost. <laughs> And it's all about, to me, it's floor space. And in, in five oh. years from now, what do I want sitting in there? Because that's what the real cost is. I learned that in California. Yeah. Socks, you only have so much space. Yeah. And, and to move this place again, no way. It's <laughs> a good, there's a lot of these lessons. I, I sort of think of them as contextual advice. Right. You might hear it, but it doesn't matter or mean anything to you if you hear it at the wrong right. point in your journey. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, like parts per square foot right. matters, machine yeah. tool spacing, all I mean, that. You don't think about what it costs to move a company like this, right? How much is rigging, electrical, plumbing, everything. Yeah. I can't believe you did copper. Uh, it's been a good year, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's one of those things where I feel comfortable cutting it apart, soldering it yeah. a new piece. You go down to Home Depot or the Ferguson yeah. Supply, you get it all. I know, but still, yeah. <laughs> copper. And we didn't manifold it every machine so that you're not cutting it apart 10 oh, times. Oh, oh. Yeah, off the MasterCard, you can buy these. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's really smart. Right. So you take a plug out, now you have another fitting. You're not running T's oh, and adapters. Huh. So this is temper now. Oh. I need, I need to get some braided hose made, but what do we have in stock now? This is like some water right. water hose. Yeah. I commend you on all the ball valves too, so you can isolate right. sections. Well, that was like the old shop too, right? You, everything's plumbed and now I need to add a machine. Now you gotta shut the whole shop off. Right. So I know, maybe running. We're doing a little bit of view of the part here. Okay. Because it gets, it gets put on the Yazza for the last off. Okay. So we run the turning work here. Why can't you do it all in one off? We've made these parts now in different variations for years. Yeah. And now it's at a point where the volume's too high to have one spindle doing all of it. It's better to break it up. So we have Man. like kind of mini tombstones on the yaws that run four at a time. Too bad you couldn't figure out a way to automate the two right. together. Damn. Well, you're, you're trying to hold plus or minus two tents over here. So it kind of needs an operator to, to kind of to it, watch right. it and adjust. And Are you able to take one of the uh, C4, C5 Capto turning tools out or uh, show, yeah. show it? I just like, these are the, if you've not seen these, they're the coolest um, I, you know, this whole idea of mill turn and the way Sandvik has done the, or whoever makes the tooling, it just, I'm it's kind of gnarly. How to use this. It's kind of gnarly. Yeah, like look at that. This is a C5. So C5, and it's got a. So it's a C5 tool to a C4 holder. So okay. I wanted C4 for the flexibility between the upper head and the lower turret. So we put C4 blocks okay. on the lower turret. It's running right now, yeah. right? Okay, So we can take this out and stick it in a lower turret block. And that's You're not having groovy. to buy extras that are C5, C4. Right, this is crazy. Oh man. Oh, so you've been at an angle or? It's just the optics of optic I thought it was kind of weird when they, when yeah, they delivered it too. Okay. We kind of worked with Sandvik and Maureen. They helped us get the first job running. Yeah. yeah. Such a cool, I mean, this, this, this kind of machine would really feel daunting to um, implement like right. a lot so digest and learn well it, it took usually when we're buying like if i needed to buy another grove right it would be a decision we'd make quickly this yeah, was sure. a back and forth sure. what brand how much are we going to go so, so we bought this machine they delivered it we started running parts scales are coming so they're going to get added. yeah you did wasted no time getting right. this thing up and running right that's pretty awesome so we were trying to basically just keep up with the demand yeah so they're going to add scales they're going to add a coolant chiller and we'll be able to see the thermal growth of the machine I want to see if I can show without showing the part. I mean, so you've got in the Area 419, I think they had the almost exact same machine. Do, yeah. yeah. So you've got a traditional kind of uh, turning spindle there, and then you've got a traditional lathe turret, but then you've got that five axis B well, head. Right, right now, he's just warming it up, right? He's trying to hold two Oh, tents. there we go. It takes a warm up cycle. Uh, I think we run it for like 20 minutes in the morning. Okay. So you got your B head. With, yeah. And instead of buying a face groover, it was a good opportunity. Hey, Put an insert tool in and mill the groove out in the face of the part, oh, and then we'll finish turning. Sure, right? way so we, easier. We use a boring bar upside down to do the finished boring instead of a face mm -hmm. groover. And originally, we had it running both parts in the same job, or the same off on both sides. Right? It was just too much operator intervention to hold all that tight work. Mm -hmm. And now in two places. So right now, we're just running one side. What's the spindle RPM? Twenty thousand on the on the. B? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the motor has to be in there? Yeah. That's incredible. Well, that was, an, that was a, well, one reason we chose the NTX, because the, the 20,000 in the C5 spindle. Usually, the other builders, you can get 20,000 C4, C6. Mm. C6 is huge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Why not C4, though? Uh, it just seems like C5 would be more rigid. Got it. Got it. But, I mean, you, you definitely see the, the work envelope here is very tight, right? Your part oh, size yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. And so this is what you were saying would make sense for a Robot yeah. part load, yeah. Yeah, some sort of thing to load these pre-milled blanks mm -hmm. into here. And yeah. use the probe to hold the diameter tolerances yeah. and stuff. We'll oh, get so, there. so what you just showed is coming. Is, that comes in. Yeah, but what does that work? 
the brother, well, one of the brothers. No kidding. So we found that doing this part, it gets so thin that we, we rough it out on both sides before we put it in the lathe, before we take it even thinner, right? It just seems crazy that it makes sense to have a brother touch it, an NTX touch it, and then a Yasta right. touch it. <laughs> we're trying to, you're trying to handle, I think we're trying to do 250 of these parts a week, and the cycle time is like an hour. Wow. Horizontal. Oh, there's the, oh, yeah. 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 Wait, it was a sheet metal design, right? There's a DMG Mori from, from Japan from 2012, and here's the 2021, 22. Yeah. I mean, the, all right, you can definitely see the culture change in the. <laughs> that's a that's a Mori Siki though. Yeah. 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 That's an NH5000. Pre... Yes. I think yes. it was during the merger, but it was like one of the last ones built before they changed the sheet metal. Got it. And I think you can actually still order this machine from Japan really? the way it is. Huh. So a lot of the we... Japanese customers they, they like this design, it's a little yeah. more rigid. I thought they built those in Davis now, though. Well, they built the NHX. What's the still, difference? You can still order the NH, the older design, from Japan. Is that the difference between the NH and the NHX? I is... think the structure is different. Okay. The, the, cost, is, the cost is more expensive. And they're still building it, so there must be a reason. Something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, just the same type of thing. We run production parts over here. Oh, this is a DCG, the, the dual. Yeah. Oh, that's The box legit. in box or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, we bought this right at the, at the changeover between... Uh, where they had the first gen NHX out. And it's Got like, it. we have an old in stock machine, we'll give it to you at this price, or we have the new one. Mm -hmm. So I'm, gl I'm glad you want this one. This machine's been great. You run a lot? Yeah, we run. I mean, this machine probably has as much hours as everything else. Okay. I can't even tell. 30,000 hours. I can't even tell if it's running right now. Right now, I don't think so. I think they're changing over the job right now. Got it. Well, he's working on, working on adding holes to the tombstone to add a new fixture. Okay, so that's an aluminum. Yeah, that's an Abbott cast tool. In the Abbott guys yeah. in Nebraska. Okay. Yeah, yeah I've been like <laughs> going deep on that. Right. Um, and I saw I saw Abbott versus we thought we could pick up some cast iron Tombstone cities to start okay. with. But yeah. You don't mind the aluminum? No, because most of the stuff we're doing on the horizontal is small, yeah. right? So your thermal growth on the on the aluminum isn't a concern. The stuff that we do on here, it's small parts. You don't really notice it. It's plenty rigid. It's got like an inch and a half cross yeah. section. Got it. Huh. How many tools in this? 60. So that's just the regular, yeah, yeah got it. Kind of just a row of three axis stuff. Yeah. This is the first new machine we ever bought, or that I ever, oh, that I ever bought. My yeah. dad had bought the Brothers, but con convinced at the time, right? But this wasn't the one that had the trunnion on it. it no, this had just a fourth axis. Okay, got it. This is kind of what started. It's Danic OI, no memory, no tools, no- Love the PCM no, no spindle, right? It's like- Oh, really? At the time, everything, this was awesome, right? We were coming from Fidel's that were from the 90s. Yeah. This was everything. And now it's like, we use this for tooling and prep work and- Yeah. yeah. All the machines have tool setting on them now. We retrofitted mm -hmm. all the old ones, bloom on most of the machines and our lasers. Something that they can automatically set and break detect all the machines. And that is- do you need the builder support or just Bloom can Bloom handle that? Bloom came and did this that's one. Really nice. We just added that like two years ago. Yeah, that's awesome. So all the machines now you can run a program, set all the tools. Yeah. You can call a simple code, tool breakage. So you're you're not using the set length, but you're just doing it for break detect? No, both. Both, okay, got it. I don't see you, you don't have a presetter. No, we don't do yeah. any presetting. Everything Even on with the, the NTX? Oh, okay, yeah. okay, cool. It just at the point where presetters started becoming more apparent to us, it was like we already had yeah. three quarters of the machines all, all right. uh, self self sufficient. Hey, did you see the uh, on the Area 419 NTX how they call in a tool setter right. into the spindle right. to touch off the so turret the, tools? This mill turret stuff is super weird, right? It's the so... options that you have. We looked at that, and then we actually ordered a bloom setter for the B head. So there's going to be a okay. bloom kind of similar to that. Well, they have a lace style yes. that's going to be mounted above the spindle to do the B head. Yeah. And then the lower turret, you put the arm in manually and use the arm. Yeah, yeah. yeah putting the arm in manually yeah. is for the birds. Yeah. So this is kind of a, a unique machine here. This is Brothers Traveling Column Machine. Yeah. Right? Very rare. There's only three of these in the United States as far as I know. Oh, really? I don't think they took off like they thought and they didn't import any more yet. Huh. So we have one. One of the Instagram guys, the podcast, Dylan, has one. Yeah. Uh, it's a great machine. It's really rigid. Yeah. Wait, so I, I know the tool it has a more of a belt style yeah, loop so it, it has the changer. same tool changer from the pallet style Traveling yes. Column head. But it's like the Genos, right? Where the bridge moves in X and Z oh. and the table is in Y. Oh yeah, you're, you're literally. Yeah, so it's, it's a bridge design. It's really beefy. Do you have more travel or it just it just changes the kinematics? It just kinematics changes the, the kinematics. It's yeah. way more rigid. Right, right, you can definitely know. This is a 10K spindle, high torque. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. it, it, it is a beast. Awesome. So then you can run this machine's I think 30 horsepower. Yeah. You pretty much run the same cuts on like aluminum on here. But that's a 30 taper. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Huh. Short short holders obviously right really stubby. Yeah. But yeah I mean it makes good cuts and Why didn't I wish my brother would make this machine with 40 tools. Yeah. I told him I would already order three or four of them. Yeah. What's the tool capacity now? 22. Yeah. So with 40 tools what I in my head. I would mount a trunnion here, like that TNT 100 I showed you, and make these our five axis machines. Yeah. I'd pull oh those tables off of there and put them over here. Holy cow. You, there's just literally no room to get 40 tools, though. I, well, because the R, R650 is the same kind of concept, right? The head travels. Yeah, the bigger so version they of They could mount the sidearm tool changer. They have a sidearm now. Oh, really? It's not as fast as the, the as the seat frame machine, but it's plenty fast. Yeah. If okay. you're not used to this 30 taper machine, it's going to be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another example, my bro this is my brother here, pro programming on a fixture at the machine, yeah. making changes. Yeah, we're These computers have just been huge for us. We're not walking back and forth to the office. And as the shop expanded, yeah. it yeah, saved yeah. so much time. I love the idea of the cubes too, then right. you have a, a real horsepower right. computer in your yeah, office. Yeah, and if those cubes fail, there's no fan. They're 250 bucks, you just throw them away, right? Or recycle them and get another one. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. So this is the two pallet one. I love these. Cutting on the front yeah. side, really compact. Yeah. There's no shuttle in and out, right? All it does is there's a pin that drops and it spins, pin engages. There's no chip to worry about. Got it. Setting them up is a little difficult, right? But I mean, yeah. we run production on here. We're not really yeah. messing with these machines too much. Right, they're not a fun prototype. Yeah, prototyping is, is a struggle, but set these things up. You get short cycle times, you get almost 50% of throughput on these machines as you do the regular ones. Yeah, Because awesome. you have another opportunity to load it while it's running. It's tiny. It's even like Lawrence yeah. and others have had the bigger sling ones where it's, it's all, you know, another two feet coming out. I tell the brother guy, like, we have, like, the museum of every machine they've ever built at one point, right? We had an M140 before. Yeah, yeah, We had the S2A, S2B, S2C, the S2Bs, all the Speedio models that they sell besides the 650. So this is all the prep stuff, dovetailing. Prep, prep stuff, last off off of that other brother. Oh yeah. Yeah. We have we have the fixture mounted. We we'll probably show this one. We kind of have the fixture mounted oh, on look the bike, so Love you don't have that. to take it off. But you can right, you can still run something else in the middle. Did you just drill and tap yeah. the curb? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. One thing we're not afraid of is like modifying stuff, yeah. right? People, and you drill a hole in your machine to mount a, a, a backboard or a mount. It's like it's just a machine. I gotta see the compressors. Yeah. We can check out the air conditioning system too. Oh yeah. yeah. How many tonnage tons did you have to put in? 45. Oh yeah. They wanted to do 60. I said, let's just start with 45. We can always add more later, right? You can't take it back and say, I don't want this one. Everyone that came into our shop for all the years, right? We had the worst saw in the world. We had a Grove and we had a $500 like Harbor Freight saw. We're cutting <laughs> stuff because we order everything already pre-cut. Right. But we got to make two pieces. I mean, this saw is still a kind of a budget, right? It's it's manual driven. There's no, there's no uh, automatic oh, feed. Yeah, there's yeah. no saw, like, table set up. But th this for us was like, right? It's spending the, the money on the machines and then buying saws and stuff that don't run all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit harder to justify. Yeah. It's not as fun to play with the saw as it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> saw, saw. I can't believe you have, you have 1,200 amps at. 1,200 amps at 480 feet? and 600 feed at 208. Oh, so this and that has to be separate service, like two. Yeah, because there was already the service here originally at 600 yeah. amps. Yeah. We just had them add on. I don't, got yeah. it. That's so the your there's air conditioning Good system. Grief. Wow. Funny enough, there's another shop right there in that orange building. Yeah. They moved from Morgan Hill, California as well. <laughs> we machine know shop? Each, yeah, we know each other. That's machine too shop. Funny. Didn't know we were both moving here. Yeah. And then literally uh, a baseball throw away. <laughs> the camera doesn't show it, but. Uh, it's pretty cold here in yeah, February in Idaho. Yeah, degrees or whatever. Yeah. We're, we've adapted pretty well. Yeah. I think in the, over Christmas it was like negative two. Woo! This is it? This is it. So there's what? almost two of these. So there's a, there's a 30, 30 oh, wow. horsepower. These are both variable speed. Yeah. Big Two big tanks, all the copper. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I thought it would be more. Yeah, I mean, these, one of them can run the shop and then the other one kind of piggybacks back and forth and they, yeah. they alternate every other day. Yeah. Oh, is that right? The computers do that? That's cool. And there was limitations on how big we could make this room for clearance to the street and everything yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do that in the summer, does that have to get air conditioned? So basically what we did is we hooked up two exhaust fans over there and two exhaust fans over here yeah. to loop the cold air from outside. Because it yeah. was overheating and still haven't finished the setup exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. So do you have in terms of city of 20 guys? Um, 20 guys, I think five now are from Idaho. Couple okay. guys went back. They're, they're young. 
Yeah. But, and then do you have like a, a internal in-house maintenance person? No. Okay. We all kind of split the task. Okay. And a couple guys are in charge of oil and coolant, a couple guys filters. And, yeah. yeah. And is that in through uh, Pro Shop? Uh, Pro Shop, yeah. Pro Shop has a reminder and one guy kind of distributes the task. Hey, can't okay. get to this, help me out. Yeah. And that's kind of the environment. I can, if you need help, you can ask. Yeah. I mean, I'll be out here pushing the force cover around on Friday, right? To clean yeah, the yeah. shop. None of us are. No, and, and I love that. I relate a lot to that with you, but there's also the difference between that being said and that being done. Right. Um, just you know, kind of a yeah. Does, and as we right, we're still kind of in the small shop mindset. So yeah, you're not a small shop. Full-time maintenance guy, like not even a concept right now. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, I, I hear you. It's like a, and, and, it, and I've only ever worked in this environment. Right, we've kind of built this environment around us. I never worked at another machine shop. I had I did oh, a couple summers at a, at a uh, engine shop. Right, building motors because I wanted a motor for a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is like the real, the first only place I've ever worked. Yeah. And we kind of just built it and learned over the years and. What does keep you up at night? Uh, I don't know. Getting, taking on, because we never say no, right? So it's yeah. always a struggle. You, you do never, yeah. you do never <laughs> say no, which is kind of like the the tolerances that you have to hit. Like right. again, these like one thou, even like one thou true position across right. the distance is nuts. Right. And our our work in the last three years has really shifted too. We we used to do middle of the road tolerance stuff, and now it's like all the stuff we see, crazy tolerance. And as you make the parts bigger, the, the engineers have the tolerance is the same, right? On a plate, oh, right? Ten right. by twelve, five thousand flatness. Now they have a part thirty inches. They want five thousand flatness, right? It's not yeah. the same. Yeah. Well, it's oh. funny because people just hear five thousand, they think that's a mile right. in the machine world. <laughs> yeah, you're almost three feet, right? Yeah. And just fixed string. You we use. A big thing I learned over the over the last year is putting an indicator on the part as you tighten it. Yes, you start to see it. how it bends and twists and yeah. binding yeah. and all that fun stuff. Well, that, that's a good segue to inspection. Yeah, we just added this air dryer too. It's kind of oh. an aftermarket thing. The, huh. the Kaisers have air dryers, but when they fail or blow a fuse, there's no secondary backup, right? Oh. So this was a decent dryer, supposed yeah. to dry the air to where you can breathe it almost. Just a fail safe. And this, this is, everything goes through this, it's in line? Yeah. Okay. So the two compressors feed those tanks, the tanks feed into here, this feeds the system. And is it a service where they come and swap out the desiccant or so recharge it? So there's two it? different things and they alternate every, I think it's every two minutes. You'll hear this oh. one relief and this one fill up and it's a special filter and I think the life the lifespan's like two years and they'll come Are recharge it. Yeah. But they have to get recharged or does they self, like is it like the a fake out? The service company comes out and, and recharges them. Every week or something? No, every, I think every year. We haven't really? got that far yet. But, oh, wow. Yeah. Huh, that's great. Yeah. Because I've seen some of the inline desiccants, but they're a pain in the butt because it's right. like, uh, turns pink and so you So that was the thing. It's like we had the, the casers outside, it might blow a fuse or something, right? Now you have no dry air and you're circulating machines with scales, CMMs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted a fail safe to feel good. And now we can plug in a rental compressor. We have a compressor go down. Yeah. We can put a diesel one and feed the shop. Got it. Got it. Didn't you run, try to run your shop off a diesel com generator? They wouldn't let me. So I asked, because we, we were moving here, right? We are out of time. It was one of those things where, what are we going to do? The machines are already scheduled to leave. They're already torn down. The power's not installed yet. What are we going to do? It was like, can we use a generator? No, 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 I can't do that. <laughs> Surprised you asked. So I, call, I, I, I got uh, contact with the, with the Idaho power representative, and we worked together, and he pushed it through, and got it. it all worked out. But I mean, everything, it feels like, one day ahead of when it should have been, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like we had weeks of power and... Right. Oh, I love the, I love the, uh, I think I first saw these at Grove too, the little sticky mats. Feels like you're walking on like right. fresh snow. <laughs> first CMM we got, we had a manual CMM when my mm -hmm. dad was running the shop, but we got the Zeiss in like 2011. Yeah. Comparator, service plate, height gauge. Yep. No, bought the second CMM, that'll do 40 inch. 40 by 40. So those parts that we do on the grill barely fit on this Jeez. CMM as well. It's like an, always a, yeah, a yeah. moving goal of having big enough equipment. Right. And you can buy the big machine, but then how do you check the big part? Right. So. Right. And so on, on the bigger parts that we were sort of looking at, like this forging, right. is that stuff 100% inspection? There's features that are identified that are 100%. Okay. Every part so, has 40 dimensions or 30 dimensions they want to report on. Every single every one. Piece. And they get serialized and. And then you store all that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we supply the, it with them, with the yeah. parts. That's very foreign to, I think, to me, me and a lot of smaller shops right. of like, hey, how do you build out that quality system that's not only testing it, but you got to actually, in a year, somebody can call you up, give you a serial number, and you can right. pull a full report on. Right. Well, it's all customer driven, right? You only do, as, as a job shop, you only do as much as your customer asks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So go in and invest in all these huge systems that nobody ever utilizes, right? You kind of need to grow into the customer. Yeah. Base. What software stores the quality information? Uh, we use stored on our server with backups, right? PDF copies. Or oh, so it's an inspection report out of out of Calypso. Yeah. Oh, got it. Or is it Calypso? Calypso. Yeah. And okay. then 
everything everything's on a server. Another growing pain is being a small shop into a big shop. Now I got to hire an IT company, yeah, 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 manage yeah. a server, manage backups, all right. that stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm the same way. It's like I just if somebody has a computer problem, I just go fix it. But yeah, like, it's not always me. good. I'd spend, I'd spend like a day a month fixing a computer. Right? It's like just call this number and they'll handle it for you. They're great right. guys up here. Right. They help us get yeah. all the infrastructure done. And yeah, there's Noah and Chris working on. Noah's our QC manager. Cool. Chris is kind of inspecting and in, inspector and training. Awesome. Small shop, right? We have two guys full time now in inspection. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Before, oh, wow. I mean, I'd say before 2012 or so, right? I was on I was on the floor making parts in here checking parts. It's right. it's too hard to manage now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing about like in, in your full time maintenance is a good example. If you don't need it, you'll need it. But it's also one of those things like when you get one, somebody that and I'm making this up as the right. maintenance example. All of a sudden, everything's getting done a little bit better, a right. little bit on time. You're free. You know what I mean? Like right. it's kind of like oh, this was the right well, call. It, for me, it was too hard to be the best at everything. Right. right? I was just be, I was just becoming okay at everything. Checking the so box. So it's like I want to just be out on the floor making parts. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's worked at Zeiss, he's, he's really oh, yeah. good at what he does. Yeah, yeah. And, right. Yeah. I don't think I ever want to have to learn CMM software. It just doesn't it, look fun. Calypso is really intuitive in that it's CAD based. It's sort of like Apple versus Windows or uh, like a Linux based yeah, yeah. operating software where it's very user friendly, but it, it's like Photoshop. There's so many layers in it. Yeah. You could just continue to dive into it forever and still not understand everything. <laughs> Calypso is what sold me on Zeiss, right? Oh, yeah? We had Minitoy manual CMM, and it's like you look at the software and you look at the, the yep. brown and sharp software, and then you oh. look at Zeiss software, you're like looking at it, right? This is, yep. You can start measuring features and start using it. It's not like you have to read a manual to figure out how to open yep. a file. Or, Got it. It's, it's pretty intuitive. Essentially, oh, look at what that. you could do is you could set up a plot and you could eliminate any of the rest of the CAD model. So I can look at just this particular section, and I also have a color gradient to show me where the high and low spots are. Blue and red, got it. Is it doing a contact trace full? It is. Ah, that's really cool. So I would say scanning, right? Coming from a machine shop, you have manual CMM, you're taking points, you're driving mm -hmm. it by hand. Now you can drag this thing on a circle, take 1600 points. As a machinist, right? You can see where you're clamping on the vise and squeezing the part on the circle. Oh, okay. You can see clamp you clamping can location. Awesome. So you're like, oh, your that parts, so your parts are cool. spec. And, no, no way. Well, oh, look at, I can show you your three points on your pie jaws where you clamped on this ring and exactly. deformed it, right? Two separate tools right there. Yes, look at that. See where that fresh tool is. But you're still in the band, so yeah. yep. we're all and good. You're talking that that could be two tenths, right, or three tenths. It's and like that, nothing. That right? magnification level that we're looking at right there is only at five. If we reduce that back to one, it shows yeah, it we have a minimal perfect. amount of tolerance. Right. But if we go up to ten. Looks, now we looks have a terrible. Idea of exactly trying to trying to blend two different that tools on so a five-axis cool. machine, right, and being able to see, okay, the tool that cuts that front angle now might need to be adjusted in five tenths. Yep. Exactly. You can't is look at a part on an angle and go, oh, I need to move this one little cut in, right? You'll never notice it. Yep. Is that a toolpath thing or a fixturing thing? That's a toolpath thing. So okay. a different tool comes around that corner now, and it must be deflecting on that part and and pushing away in that one section where it's weaker. Yeah. We are using what are called curves. And essentially what it's doing, it's following CAD model nominals. Yeah. And by doing this, we're ensuring we're good to the customer's geometry. Because it made as pro profile, every drawing you get now in the last five years, profile, profile, profile. There's not, What's they're, that they're mean? not using linear dimensioning. They're it's saying the com solid. compare, yeah, compare yeah. your part to the solid. Yeah, right, right. It needs to be within 5,000 plus or minus Yep. Two right of the solid shape. So you bring in a, a step file, basically, yeah. or exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'm working off the same model they're programming yeah. the CNC machines Got off it. of. Got it. That's really cool. Yep, that's where Calypso really shines is the graphical sort of observations you can give the machinists. You can give them information immediately when they need it. Using this machine for a year taught me so much about machining and clamping yeah, and fixturing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's almost like you want to send the guys in here to use the CMM, see the results. Because so many times in shops, right? You turn a part in inspection, you get a report. Oh, it's all good. Just go run it. You don't yeah. learn anything from how you're making it. But if you have, if you're running, you know, part A, and then somebody brings in part C, can you just drop it in a fixture on the pin location, pull a program, and hit go, and like yep. not have to think or worry? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. The way that we have it set up here is these fixtures are dedicated. Okay. And so when the guys come in, they load the part up, hit start, and walk away. Yeah. By the time they come back, they have a graphical report. So we kind of use this one as like the pro or as the production CMM, right? All the jobs that are in the shop that run every day uh -huh. come up here. The guys have dedicated locations, yeah. and then he's using the other CMM to do the new stuff that comes in. Yeah. Every part we make gets a full first piece inspection. It might not get a full report, documented mm -hmm. report, right? But the first part, every dimension is checked. That's crazy. Repeat parts, right? Everything, right? Because yeah, there's yeah. so many variables in machining. You're running, you're running lights out. The last thing you want to do is come in. A hundred parts are bad, right? Yeah. It's about that.
so having a second person in here to help Noah now, right, was huge for us because mm -hmm. only one guy, two, two CMMs, you're pushing work from 20 machines through here, right? It's, it's a lot to take care of. So how does the shop for team talk to inspection team? Like, do they just wheel parts in on carts or yeah, so tickets? I mean, ideally, they bring in parts uh, as they're running, right? You do daily checks, morning, mm -hmm. lunch, before you go home, right? Mm -hmm. And then lot inspection, it gets wheeled in on carts. Okay. There's, we have a team set up on that rack oh, over there, there. Okay, so yeah. they, put a, they put a job on the rack, they okay. send a message, hey Noah and teams, can you check oh, this piece? okay, yeah. interesting. Thank you, good meeting you. Yeah, you too. That's pretty much it, you got inspection, you got shipping, the future employees of the shop, <laughs> my brother's wife and his baby. Oh, awesome, awesome. My, my wife was bouncing around here somewhere with my second son and... <laughs> and your wife works in the business? Yeah, awesome. so when we moved here, both my brother's wife, uh, Lindsay, and my <laughs> wife, Andrea, they both came into the shop as like yeah. a part-time thing to help fill in and it's and been, your, been and your dad works here. My dad works here. My mom works here. And my brother, I just walked by with my mom, Sandy. She's the controller. Everybody, everybody gets along? CEO, boss. And nice to meet you. <laughs> There's my, my wife, Andrea. Good to meet you. I'm John. Andrea, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. you. Future, future machinist number two. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. I actually put a uniform on for him. I think this is the first time we ever had a baby on a shop tour. This is a big we got, moment. We got two of them. Two babies. Wow. Have you like used his finger to push cycle start yet? My, my little, my like four year old, right? When he was like two, we started bringing him to the shop at night on the way home from work, push the button, yes. he gets amazed, right? Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's Lego. Gro Grove actually sent us a, a, a Lego of the yes. 550. And that was, he's, awesome. he's all in the Legos, right? So getting that here was awesome. That's really cool. He's just like his dad. Awesome. Just like his Nothing dad. wrong with that. What a cool shop. Seriously, really awesome. The people can find you on creationsultd.com, LinkedIn, Instagram, yeah. WhatsApp. What's your Insta? Uh, just my name, Dennis, Dennis Raffi. Raffi. Okay, yeah. awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for the tour, man. Dennis. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was great having yeah. you. Yeah. As always, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.